Good morning everybody. So today we're fishing a lot smaller of a lake with a lot of grass and super clear water. It's usually about 10 to 15 feet visibility. So it's 56 degree water temps. I was hoping for top water. Doesn't look like that's going to happen, but I've got it tied on so I may throw it anyway. But I'm going to go through the usual, of course my finesse stuff, and then of course I got a jerk bait tied on and a few crank baits to see if I can maybe pull out some fish so hopefully we can get on some fish and hopefully it'll make for a good video so of course once again with my luck we get bright blue skies not a single cloud in it so i don't expect the fishing to be very good but i'm hoping we can at least catch a few of them to where i can at least Hopefully make a small video out of it. Uh, hopefully you guys have watched the last one. Uh, me saving a horse in the creek. Or I say me, it wasn't me, but I helped a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that was definitely an interesting day. And especially an interesting day, with, first day with the GoPro. Of course, the day I get a camera is the day that something weird has to happen. So hopefully nothing weird happens today. Except maybe, you know... A, five or six pounder or anything like that um the one thing i will say about this lake is there are good fish in it because i have caught good fish out of it and i've seen good fish got caught out of it the only problem is is it is the closest lake for just about anybody near me and it gets fished heavily it gets fished heavily by bass fishermen uh cat fishermen uh, and they even put a, a fish called a sauga in it, which is apparently a cross between a sauger and a walleye. Now, I already thought that a sauger was some type of walleye, but I don't know. I didn't know that they were in here until I caught one one day, and I was wondering what the heck it was. So, yeah, I was uh, pretty shocked by it, but they they don't really put up a good fight, but if you're throwing a crankbait or something, man, they smack the crap out of it, and it is a fun bite. So, I wouldn't be too opposed to catching one, but, and I think they have to be like 20 or 21 inches to keep, but I've never cooked one, but that may be a good idea for a video if I can come out here and, and catch one. So, but, so... I got out a little bit later than I thought, but oh well, it'll hopefully still work. Hopefully I can stay here until a little bit in the afternoon and see if we can catch some fish. So as of right now, I'm just starting off with this crankbait, working around this point. It used to produce really well for me and it usually does in the spring during the spawn. But as of here recently, it's just not been producing any fish for me. So, but like I said, there is a lot of grass and i don't know if it's i don't know exactly what kind of grass it is i always called it turtle weed because it's not hydrilla but it's i'll i'll probably hook some of it and i'll show y'all and you can try to tell me what it is because i'm not educated i just call it turtle weed and go with that but it's a it's a pain to fish through but of course uh, i have a love-hate relationship with it for the simple reason of this this lake has almost no cover what you see right now on the camera is really everything that's that that's here cover wise except for the docks and everything like that but um so if that grass wasn't here then there wouldn't be no there wouldn't be any cover for these fish and everybody wants to complain about it and get rid of it but then where would these fish go these fish would scatter and you wouldn't be able to find them because there's no rock piles. There's a few brush piles, but of course they're loaded with crappie. Because, well, crappie fishermen were the ones that put them there. So I don't really, I don't like it. But at the same time, I know how to fish through it. And usually I can come out here and catch a fish or two. And hopefully I can do that today. It's me and another boat out here today. So, it, of course, it is a Friday though. So not a lot of people will come here, but... Usually in the summer and everything, and during the warmer months, this place is absolutely flooded with uh, swimmers. So, but we ain't got to deal with that with 56 degree water temps. So that's one good thing about fall.
guys i just want y'all to look at the size of that nest i don't know if it's wasps or what but it's freaking huge look at that thing i probably would not be this close if it wasn't cold and i didn't think that they were out but it looks freaking huge oh by the way there's like the water clarity i'm sitting in about four or five feet of water and you can see the bottom no problem so yeah but i just wanted to show you all that because i thought that it was neat and i've never seen one seen one like that around here i'm i know i've, I've seen them on tv in louisiana and swamp things and everything like that but i've never actually seen one that big around here so i just thought it was kind of neat and i wanted to share the experience with y'all <laughs> all right back to trying to catch fish so far not doing good uh it's been about 20 minutes but sometimes they can just come out of nowhere so cross your fingers guys all right i just wanted to show y'all what this grass looks like and hopefully y'all can tell me something right there it is everywhere here. Let's get close up on it. I've always called it turtle weed, but I really have no idea <clears throat> what it is. I'm just seeing if the fish have went deep. I picked up a 5XD that I had tied on. and the One thing about it, though, you'll grab all this grass, so I try to stay on the outside of it, but so but where it comes out so far it's almost impossible to to get away get away from it so as of now no fish catch so this may turn into a gear review <laughs> mm. are you kidding me wow look at this rock bass um well a very pretty fish not what i was expecting <laughs> all righty then guys well guys there is one nothing major a uh, decent little fish he came on an a rig uh, about like six feet from the boat so maybe that means they're biting a rig because this dude behind me is absolutely whacking them <laughs> i wish i had that much skill but there's number one hopefully more to come oh yeah oh god guys it has been a complete and utter grind out here at least for me but I'm out here, throwing my back up, launching the A-Rig for, God, he's got a big old mouth, but, man, he ain't but like 16, maybe 15 inches. He could be a lot better, but fish is a fish, and he smacked it, so I'm having fun, a little bit fun throwing the A-Rig, so hopefully that's the second <laughs> of many more. Throwing around the umbrella. Got four exo swims and a and I think ghost shad and and then a sexy shad in the middle. I just I've always heard have one different one in the middle just to kind of stand out from the group. And maybe it'll get a bit more. I don't know if that's true, but well, so far I've caught two fish on it, and I've usually never caught fish on an A rig. Actually, this is only my second time throwing it. So uh, now I'm actually over here by the boat ramp. To, uh, so I got a feeling that I will probably be launching this for the rest of the day. But I don't know how long that'll be, considering that I'm already getting tired and the fishing sucks. So, or at least it does for me. I'd, uh, there's been one guy who is actually the reason I'm throwing the A-Rig. He said that he's been whacking them. So I apologize for the noise in the background. There's a big truck going over that road back there, and it echoes like, like crazy on the water. Uh, at least he honked at me. <laughs> but, all right, guys. Uh, 
I want to keep this on because just in case I get another one, but I don't think I'm going to. So I'm probably just going to get back with y'all next time I hook into a fish. If I do. All right. So as you guys just saw, the fishing was terrible for me. And I can't just turn three fish into a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the rods and reels that I was using today and what I what I use them for. So just in case any of y'all are wanting to buy any or looking at any or anything like that. Um, but if you do have extra questions, put in the comments and I'll answer it as best I can and as quick as I can. Uh, first one up, one that they don't make anymore, but one of my absolute favorites is the Shimano Kamara. Uh, this thing, I really wish they hadn't quit making it. Um, it was replaced by the X-Pride, but I didn't care for the X-Pride too much. Uh, and I definitely didn't care for the Zodius. Um, but this is the Shimano Kamara. It's a 6.8 medium. This is strictly my finesse jig and my weightless Senko rod. I absolutely love this thing and I hope it doesn't break one day because I will cry. And it's paired up with a 60th anniversary Daiwa Tatula 100. Uh, and this, uh, I absolutely love this thing. Uh, I first had it on an IMX, uh, but then I upgraded the reel on the IMX and I was like, well, I'm gonna see how this works out. And it actually pairs really nice. And of course we have police sirens going on in the background. Uh, and I've got this paired with 12 pound Seaguar Invis X. 90% uh, of mine have Invis X on them. I absolutely love that stuff, but it's just preference. Um, and I want to start off by saying I am not sponsored by any of these brands. I bought all of these with my own money and just because I wanted to. There was nothing more. So the second rod I'm going to tell you all about is the Daiwa BLX. Now this one will have its own video because there are zero uh, reviews or ratings or anything of this, this line of rod. But this is the 7.3 Medium Light Limber Graphite Series. Now the Limber Graphite Series, oh and of course the fish jumps over there. Uh, the Limber Graphite Series are your cranking rods. And this thing says it's a medium light. It's not a medium light. This thing is a medium plus. And I originally got it for jerk baits. Didn't like it for jerk baits, but I absolutely love this thing for uh, like balsa crank baits or your square bills or all the way up to your uh, to your to your kind of medium divers. You know your ten footers or anything like that. And it also really works for uh, swim baits, usually in the uh, four inch range. So. And uh, it's paired up with a Daiwa Tatula SV 2020 model. I love this thing, but it's a little bit geary. Uh, I don't know if it's just mine or what, but I'm going to uh, take it apart and clean it this winter. Uh, but uh, this thing is absolutely awesome. Uh, if, if you're new to the bait casting game, this one right here. I was casting it in about 20 mile an hour wind the other day. Never backlashed it once. This thing is awesome. And then the next rod, we're going to jump up in price a little bit is the Dobbins 755 DRX Ecstasy. Um, this thing is awesome. It is lightweight. The cork is amazing on it. Uh, and I just uh, started using Dobbins rods last year. I am very much impressed with them. Um, but this thing has a super awesome blank to it. It's really nice. It's got the nice Torzite guides to it. It is awesome. Uh, this thing is my 3 8 ounce, uh, half ounce jig or tungsten, big worm rod, anything that I throw 3 8 or plus, I have this one. They say you can get away with the 4 power. I like the 5 power because for throwing 3 8 on a medium heavy for me, I just don't like it. I cannot stand it. It just feels like it's overpowering the rod, even though I know it's not. And then this is paired with a Daiwa Tatula Elite, um, the uh, HD model, the 7 3 to 1 gear ratio. And this thing is awesome. If you want a bait to, or if you want a, a reel to just absolutely sling a bait, this one right here. I don't really suggest it for lighter baits, quarter ounce or below, just because I don't think that it handles it very well, but if you're looking for something to sling a crankbait or sling a jig or anything like that, this is the one. 
Now this is gonna, I'm gonna take this reel off and put it on another rod that I get hopefully this year and then I'm gonna put an H gear ratio one on this one. Um, one thing about this reel though, I did have to uh, oil the bearings because it had a real bad squeal to it um, whenever I would cast it really hard. But I oiled them and it is absolutely awesome now. Next, we're going to go to my IMX. I've had this thing for probably about three years now, and I, I love Loomis rods. Um, and this is the 853. This is the 7 foot 1 medium heavy. And this, I love the IMX. I couldn't afford an NRX at the time. I'm going to get one this year, hopefully. And um, But the IMX has really served me well. Um, Cork's a little bit dirty on it, uh, and for all my rods, I do U40 the cork. I, uh, I seal them, but this one I had a little bit before I figured out about the U40, but it's still pretty decent shape, um, and I've used this thing for a lot. Now this one, I will almost always have either a quarter ounce or three sixteenth ounce uh, tungsten weight. I use tungsten just because I like the smaller profile, and I, li I like the, the colors. So, and then I will always throw a quarter ounce or three sixteenths, and it, uh, it, it can be a worm, a crawl, or anything like that, and it handles it well, and it's, it's, it's sensitive, especially for the amount of money. Uh, and it's paired with a Cronark MGL. Uh, this is the XG, the 8 to gear ratio, and uh, it's, I, I really like the reel. Uh, it can be a little bit uncomfortable uh, for me at times, holding it for a long time, but uh, other than that, I really like it. Uh, especially the MGL spool, it's it, it's absolutely awesome. So, and then the next one I'm going, next one is the Daiwa Tatula Elite, and this rod. A lot of people hate the color on it. I really like the color on it, but that's just because I'm weird. Um, but this is the 72 Universal, and I got this just because you can use it for anything. I've used it for cranks. I've used it for. Uh, weightless Senkos, uh, Wacky Rig, and Texas Rig. As you can see, I've got a jerk bait on it, and this is a Mega Bass. Uh, I believe it's the Ora, uh, GG Oyakawa. Um, this thing was a limited color, and I couldn't pass it up. Um, this thing is absolutely awesome. Um, but I use this rod for topwater, jerk baits, anything you can think of, I'm sure this rod will do it. Um, and it's paired up with a 13 Fishing Concept C. Um, I really like 13 fishing uh, the reels uh, some of their cranking rods are really nice too and the rods are very sensitive um, but uh, their reels uh, I really like um, I do not suggest this reel if you are new to the bait casting game Sim uh, for the simple fact of I really feel like their braking system is not the best but if you're wanting a really really strong reel um, that can just absolutely sling a bait once it's once it's set up the concept C this thing is awesome and the, the, uh, the concept A's are nice too, but I like the white <clears throat> Next up is just my my deep cranking reel uh, or rod and reel setup uh, This it's the only reason I bought it and I bought it because it was cheap and it's been reliable and I don't throw a deep crank a lot so I didn't want to spend you know six hundred dollars on a combo for it so this is the Daiwa Tatula XT and this is a glass cranking rod this is the only glass cranking rod that I have and it so far it has been absolutely awesome for three XDs all the way to a 5XD don't know if, it, if you're supposed to throw it on it but I can throw it on it and uh, so this thing is uh, absolutely awesome uh, and like I said, I've caught many fish on it, and it's it's held up so far. Uh, and this is paired with the Daiwa Tatula 150. And the reason I got the 150 is because it's a five gear ratio, um, and it's it's really nice, uh, especially for the price point. You know, it's you you can't beat this thing. Uh, it's it, it's my workhorse. It's one that I'm not afraid to throw anything on because I know it can do it. And I really like the five gear ratio. For cranking it's really nice um, and then I'll, I'll show y'all here's what I was throwing that a rig on um, I don't believe it's meant for it but guess what I was using it for it and it handled it quite well but this is a G Loomis E6X um, jig and worm rod 
Now, I had this until I bought that Ecstasy. Uh, and this thing was nice. Uh, you could feel the bites, but you could not feel uh, what you were dragging uh, your jig or the big worm or anything like that on. So I wanted to upgrade, uh, and I was going to get an NRX, but they were sold out at the time. So then I found that uh, Ecstasy, and it's, it was really nice. Uh, and this is paired with a uh, Daiwa Catalina. And this thing, it, I am so glad I bought it. I bought it at Tackle Trap when they were... Uh, when they were just when they had a big shipment and they were just trying to sell them and i got this thing for a super great deal and this thing is absolutely awesome it's got the big old power handles and i just absolutely love it and it's the seven three gear ratio <clears throat> like i said i don't believe that rod was meant for it it's throwing it pretty well and it'll do until i get another one and i'm thinking about trying a mega bass one so let me know if you guys have a mega bass one and if you really like it and especially for a rigs and maybe some big swim baits Last but not least, uh, my, my, my holy grail, because this is a rod I use constantly. And I have a pontoon coming in here. Just leave me alone. Um, but this is the G Loomis GLX, the 822 Shaky Head Specific. And I will throw a shaky head probably more than I should, but it's because it's my confidence bait. You can throw it at any point in time. And uh, it's I always catch fish on it. Um, but this is my religiously 3 16 ounce and a usually four and a half to five inch worm. That is the only thing I will ever throw on this rod and that's the only thing you will ever see. Just because it feels absolutely awesome. You can probably go to a quarter ounce and get away with it. I stick 3 16 just because that's what I'm comfortable with. And it's paired with a Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus 2500. Absolutely love this reel. Nothing bad to say about it. Uh, it's smooth. The drag is smooth. It's nice looking. Um, however, I cannot wait to try a Vanford because they say the Vanford is even better than this one. So I'm going to get one hopefully on Black, uh, Black Friday here soon. And hopefully I can tell you all about that. But so there is the rods and reels that I was using today. And I still have more. I still have, I think, probably about six or seven more in the box. So if you guys want to see that, let me know and I'll let you know what I think about them. Um, the BLX will get a video of its own because there are no um, reviews on it or anything else online. So I'm going to put up what I think of it and like I said, I really like it. So um, I appreciate you guys watching the video. Sorry the fishing sucked, but there's my rods and reels and there's what I use them for. And so thank you all very much. done that a few times can't you tell guys <laughs>